Hi everybody, welcome to the Todd and Aaron Show. Our podcast today consists of candy, lobster. So far this is all working for me. And it's your fault. If, if you're watching on September 27th, we have a first major snow in the mountains predicted. This is my last tank top of the year, I and know it. my first flannel of the year. And I'm going to go camping with my son. You know why? Because we don't care. All right. First of all, since, since we're talking about this, let's make some chowder. Hi, everyone. Uh, don't make this recipe. Whatever you do, don't do it. Just don't do it. If you ever wanted to know how committed I am to Aaron... This show is what it's about. All right, so Erin's idea of, so what can I make you? And her idea is basically um, to give me a shopping list. The shopping list here is for lobster, corn, and bacon chowder. First of all, lobster chowder. Lobster, in my view, Kenny Bunkport hat, grew up East Coast, lived in Ma Nothing goes with it. You steam a lobster, right? That's it. You don't put it on oh, anything else with it. It's what, soup? No. No, it's a steamed lobster, and it's wonderful. You have clams, you have steamed clams. Mussels, steamed mussels. See how it works? Crabs. You steam a crab. You don't do crab louis or whatever it's called on top of a steak. That's disgusting. Now your crab tastes like cake. No, steak. So here's the deal. You've seen the lobsters. I've decided to do it for her. Now, there were four of them. I, uh... I took them on and I won. Now, where did I get lobsters? I got lobsters, um, I forget Supermarket. I think it was Lucky's over on Redwood Road. And they were selling for like $3.98 a piece. And they're small, they're like chicken lobsters. They're like quarter pound, maybe a little under. Um, and I said, I'll take a box. So I'll throw them in the freezer and I'll do something with them later. And how fun would it be, you know, because for three, whatever. It's lobster. All right, so. We're going to do this, and I'm not happy about it. I hope the people at Bahaba don't find out I'm doing this. They cut my, my head off. All right, so what we're going to use today, we have a couple different ingredients. Um, basically, we're going to make a chowder. How do you make a chowder? You start with, let's say, oh, chicken. You're going to start with uh, chicken uh, broth chicken broth, and that is basically start with a clear soup, right? And then you add, uh, we're going to be adding half and half, half and half to it, and that's what gives it its creaminess. All right, so what we need to start with is a pan. Oh, let's go through this, shall we? Let's go through this while we're looking at it. Um, I've got yellow onions. I've got, <clears throat> get out of the way. I've got a little bit of crushed red pepper. I've got a twig of thyme. I've got paprika that's smoked paprika. I've got powdered dry thyme. I've got garlic. I've got bacon. I've got the onions again. So I'll give you the ingredients here. Here. Just so you have them. Because if this turns out great, I'm adding potatoes too. You know why? Because I'm an American. Produce. Oh, I forgot to tell you about the corn, didn't I? Two and a half cups of corn, frozen kernels. Also, a tablespoon of garlic, I got that. Half teaspoon of dried thyme, got that. Uh, one thyme fresh sprig, I have that. Two cups yellow onions, I have that. Three cups of chicken stock. One teaspoon of paprika smoked. One pinch of red peppers, uh, salt and pepper, and half and half. Now, that's all I have. And I've never made chowder before. So I'm going to do it my way, and one of the things I'm going to do is that's what I ended up with out of four of those tiny little lobsters. So I'm going to cut the meat up. So I've got the meat. I'm going to cut it up. And the other thing I did was, and I think it's brilliant, <laughs> is I made a bag. 
And these are the little net bags that the lobsters came in, all right? And so what I did was I took all the, the little tiny legs and stuff like that, and I grabbed them and I crushed them as much as I could and I put them in the bag. And that way, right, flavor? That makes sense, doesn't it? Sure it does. So let's do one thing here. Let's, um, let's get the pot. I got it over here and I softened, I softened the onions on this. So you can see, I got those. All right, so, whew, this has been a long day. Look at my kitchen is just trashed. That's usually a, a fun day, isn't it? As long as you have somebody else clean it up, which, which I don't, so I'm on my own here. All right, coming back over. All right, so let's put this here. Let's dump that there. So I'm thinking chowder pieces, right? So you want enough, right? You want enough of it. It's still got the blade in it. You know what? Leave it in. It's flavor. Uh, let someone else pick it out. Who's going to complain, right? Who's going to complain about this? And the tail. I gotta tell you, this this just hurts me. This hurts me to the core. There's another tail. Butter is the only thing. Once again, that cartilage blade going through there. We're gonna leave it. That's what they get. Ha ha. That's my revenge. That's my sweet, sweet revenge right there. Another piece here, another piece there. All right, so. We can put this together as we speak, shall we? All right, I'm gonna save the lobster for later. I really am. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, oh, by the way, I am making, if you do it by those directions I just gave you, it gives you like four servings. I don't cook in four serving deals. I just don't. It's just like, I don't want to cook every day. So I'm kind of enlarging. I'm kind of enlarging the, uh, the deal that we're doing. Now, I also have more bacon uh, than this, and I'm going to put most of that in, and I'm going to put the thyme in, and then I'm going to put the smoked paprika, and I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to put the sprigs in. Might as well throw the rest of that in. And I'm going to throw uh, all the bacon in and then the red peppers. All right, so let's see what that looks like. Some kind of mess. That's what that looks like. Can you see anything? All right, so what, what am I missing? I am missing more bacon, of course. All right, so there it is. Now, my stewing teapot thing is here. I'm going to tie it off so I don't lose it, or I can fish it out easy. That's a better thing to say. All right, so it's in there. It's in there. It goes on the stove. All right, so it's been cooking for about, I don't know, about 20, about 20 minutes. And that's what we have. And at this point, what I wanted to do is I'm going to add the, uh, the corn and the potatoes. Now, I don't want it to get all mushy, you know. Um, potatoes are going to definitely fail in this because they're, even though they're russets. And then I'm going to add the potatoes in. Now the only thing left is the lobster and, and that. When to put it in? Let's put it in now. All right, so lobster's going in right here. Okay, that was a pain in the butt. 
Oh, should have pre-peeled this, because these, it's just like, uh, get off the lid of that. There, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> Hang on one second. Okay. All right, so, do you have to shake half and half? I'm not sure. All right, open that up. Bring this back in. Um, go ahead and add it. You can cream almost any soup. I've just never done it before. All right, let's see if the, is that enough creaming? I don't know. Is there really ever enough? Look at this. See, once again, I have cooked a full pot of soup. Aaron, call your mom. Tell her she's getting a treat. I do this every time. Look. 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 If there's a will, I'm in it. I, I have to set. Well, that looks actually pretty good. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, where's my stinking chair? You know, as a chef I used to watch. And he, he cooked from a chair. His food was so good, he was huge. Put that on the stove right now, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you in about 20 minutes. Look how freaking amazing this is. Todd made me lobster corn Good. and potato chowder. Is that not glorious? Bacon. Oh, with bacon, he says. <gasps> That's so tasty, I can hardly wait. Oh, full recipe on the show tomorrow on the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. I am so in love with you right now. I don't know if I've ever loved you more. I can't believe how dirty I feel right now. You made me lobster chowder. You made me cut apart lobster and put it in other things instead of just eating it steamed. Were you all excited when you had everything all assembled and you're like, and then you add the lobster and you realize that you had to actually crack open all the lobsters my and friend, peel all the bits. And my friend Joanne from Maine won't ever talk to me again. It's entirely possible. This is going to be so freaking good. Can I have a bite? Please. So, it is lobster, bacon, corn, corn. chowder. I've never made one before. And by the way, I didn't get directions. I got a shopping list. Well, I thought a chowder was like a chowder. I never you know made what a chowder. Well, you know what isn't a chowder. You just make it. Okay. Who cares? <sighs> Mm. Mm. The lobster is still totally juicy. Mm. The bacon has a nice bite. There's a little something on the finish, a little spicy something. Mm. 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 The corn has that perfect sweetness. What do you think? Thank your God. I will not be swayed to your dark side. You know you love it. Tell me it is not luscious. It's not bad. Tell me it is not succulent. It is not bad. Really? The First, lobsters would die happy knowing they gave it themselves for this dish. Wiping away a small tear with their claw. I'm not sorry. So it worked? Mm. Okay. Oh Good. God. I have a full pot full, as always. My mother is totally scoring tomorrow, isn't she? And if you've been furloughed, I can help you out. I'll drop some by. Just I'll let figure. Us know. I'll fi I'll fi I will do this. I will figure someone out. I will figure this out. Furloughed will, family, we'll drop something by I for you. I will do that. Totally. All right. Put it on the put it on the deal. Facebook, or you can personal message us if you'd rather. I okay. think I think uh, if you serve our country. You, you should have chowder. Some chowder. They're like, I'd really rather right. have my paycheck back, but we chowder. Ch this is the best I got. Um, uh, go ahead and uh, share mm. the show if you wish. Um, and the, the recipe, sort of, mm. uh, whatever it was. And um, and thanks for, for uh, you know, watching another cooking segment with Todd mm. in the kitchen. You're doing dishes, right? This is freaking amazing. Why You're, do you have more lobster in yours than mine? Well, I did until that mm. bite. 
All right, back to the show. Rogue parking. I saw this today. Explain this to me. Rogue parking on Third uh, Third Ave. Um, everybody parks parallel, right? Like this parallel parking. Yeah, yeah, parallel yeah, parking. yeah, yeah. Well, this one group decides diagonal parking, diagonal, diagonal. Three cars have joined in, and there is a white line that they're not crossing. They're not crossing. And it seems right, but there's no sign about diagonal. They're the rebels. The only thing I don't like about that, though, they're is that's usually where the bikers go. The no, bikers. no, no. That's on the other side of the street. Uh -huh. They're fine. So they're just like, forget it. We're just doing it But now way. it's a gray area. It's kind of like when you got a ticket oh, parking on the wrong side of the street because it was a one way. And they said I was parked on the wrong way. Wrong way. So, yeah, wrong way. Yeah. Someone in training. Anyway, yeah. so tell me this. First of all... Well, this is interesting. I just thought this was a good warning because everyone's starting to come downtown now that it's fall. Yeah. There's more into nightlife. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of Christmas shopping. And unfortunately, the parking enforcement people are waiting for you. <laughs> Dead serious. When the guy talks to us, he's like, yeah, we're really excited. I'm like... Well, why, okay. why are they so excited? How much money are we talking? Think about it. $50 million a year in parking Shut tickets downtown Salt Lake City. Up. $50 million. All of yours. As a matter of fact, an expired meter, which is the most common thing, $38 a ticket. There's no getting around it. Oh, my God. 38 bucks a ticket. And there's women who, there's a couple that said, I got down to my meter like 10 minutes before it was set to go off. And she said someone had already given me a ticket. And then you have the challenge of trying to prove. And then you got to take time off work. You have to go downtown. And I think we used they to know we, it. When we worked uh, in radio, our windows faced the street. Floor to ceiling, we could see everything, and the parking people would go through. And most of them are, you know, just doing their job. And then there's other ones, and they're like, they're like, the computer, the little hand computer, yeah. and, and they're going like this, and then they're ripping it off, and they're like, yeah, take that, and you're like, you. Just sure. once for the show, Todd went and he fed the meters ahead of each one of them. And then someone from the city called us and told us we couldn't do that again. They said, how'd you know? And they said, you used the same card on all of them. And I went, oh. Yeah, they weren't okay. happy with us. No. I, funny you would say that because our studios were actually in 3rd South, which is the single worst place to park Shut and almost up. guaranteed you're going to get a ticket. Up. Yeah, they said Thursdays are the worst day. Um, and the compliance officers cite most drivers between 11 a.m. and 12. What do they call them? Uh, compliance. <laughs> Officers, right. hands down, though Third South is the easiest place to get a ticket. One of the reasons Worst why job. is because they've got the big heavy-duty bike lanes there, um, and so if you're screwing around with it, they'll make sure you know. Another way that people are getting tickets that you wouldn't think of: there's places that you're expected to back in. I'm not understanding why it should have to be like that, but if you don't back in and if you just pull in the normal way, oh, they I see, I see. For it. I, I understand yeah. this. Get it now? So yeah, because if the street's going this way, here's your car, street's going this way like this, and the parking spaces are like this, you pull up and you turn and you go in. If you have to do this, they don't like it, but there should be a sign. And well, that they is say the, that, they the, say that there's always signs, but okay. Worst job in the world. Um, expired meter was number one registration and plates, then overtime parking, uh, no parking. They think that's so not cute. You get a $60 fine for that one. And no parking within five feet of a fire hydrant. So you, I mean, I, but that's smart. Someone, but, well, with red But curve. the trouble is, I've been in that edgy thing where someone is boofed out of their space and I'm trying to edge back into what should be my space and you might be just a little bit over. But they have no sense of humor. So when it comes to $50 million, they're, they're, they're not going to cut you any slack. You know what firemen do? And this is a really funny thing, I think. Uh, if you park in front of a fire meter and there's a fire in the area, what they'll do is they'll take their hose and connect it to, the, to this hydrant. And then they'll bust out your side windows and run the hose right through. And it drips. <laughs> And, and I'm gushes not, water. I'm not going to say a word. You're in the wrong place. I'm not going to say a word. All right. So what a fair warning. Now you know the worst places to park and you don't want to get a ticket. So. All right. Tell me something good. I love this one. Did you see this picture this week? It's been all over Facebook, but it was this homeless gentleman and he was fixing a young woman's tire. Oh. It was up in Ogden. Okay. And this cute woman who owns a cafe up there, Jesse Jean's on Historic 25th in yeah. Ogden, took a picture of it just to show... How amazing this was. Now, the reason why this is especially cool is because he hangs out at Jesse Jean's restaurant because um, the owner and her husband um, understand homelessness. Her husband, Ron, had been homeless for several years, mm -hmm. understood what it was like to have nowhere to go, to be hungry all the time. And so they do a pay it forward meal where um, people can donate six twenty five. dollars and they feed the homeless for as long as the pay it forward money lasts. That oh, week. I see. And yeah. then they start over again the next week. Right. And they really love this guy. This gentleman who is who's homeless who helped out is named Chuck. And this started he was more or less incarcerated as early as seven. Right. And so his entire life has been 
misery and a lot of anger. And, and yet, yeah, this was the first time he got in a place where he felt valued, and he helps, he sweeps up, and he helps around the place. Oh, and, he works there, and he and he feels like he belongs there, okay, and then I he see. gets his meals as well. But so when he saw, looked out, and saw this woman needing help, he immediately went out, and he said later, he said, "This was the first time that I understood." How good it felt to be in a position where I could offer something. Because so many times the homeless feel like they have nothing to offer. They have nothing of value to the rest of the world. I thought that was beautiful. Anyway, if you'd like to donate. I'm sorry I didn't mean to screw you, you up this early sure? in the day. God. If you'd like to do donate, I'm going to go and, and pay a couple of meals. Um, it's six twenty-five a meal. You can go to Jesse Jeans on Historic Twenty Fifth on Facebook in Ogden, and you can donate there. It'll show you where to donate. It's easy peasy, and you can donate and buy a couple of meals for people. All I right. just thought that was a beautiful thing to start thinking about how we could help more in a way that that matters. Here's another great thing, and you should do this before it rains, and it's going on tonight and tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Tomorrow, Saturday. Okay. And this so, is called Art Off the Grid. This is in the Avenues area of Salt Lake City. So, so it's beautiful. I'm, I'm just going to show you this really quick before we talk to Anne. And this is the grid, and this is the Avenues, and all the red dots. Guess what they are? Houses. Houses of artists. And you were invited to go... Into their home. Into their home and look at their creations. And how fun is that? My friend Kim Woodman Stockdale does this every year, and she was telling me about this incredible fairy house that she'd created, and someone from San Francisco was just visiting, and they had seen the notice about the art, right. the art walk uh, down at the visitor center, and they bought it and took it back home to San Francisco, and she said, I just love the idea of that. It's so it's so tomorrow, good. the 28th, Saturday the 28th, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., and uh, you can go to avenues slash open spaces, it's open Studios, Avenue slash Open Studios on Facebook if you want to get more information. I'll make sure we have the link here. But yesterday we got to talk to Anne. Anne Abba, who is one of the most amazing artists in Salt Lake City. Everybody knows who and she is. And you have to ask, is like, how did you get involved in this? So Anne, how long have you been involved in this concept? Because it's so great, that the way of walking to everyone's homes and seeing their art inside their home. What, what made you get involved? Well, what made us get involved, I was, I was talking with other artists on the avenues and we were we were talking about um, the inability of artists to show their work, or to have, or to have any kind of any kind of a public following, because galleries are not available to most artists. Artists are, you know, they um, they get into galleries depending on how much money they bring in, and that's the only impetus. Galleries are not about art; they're about money. It's a business, and so people who are kind of offbeat. Um, they don't they don't have any ability to show it they don't have any they don't have any following so we decided we decided to do avenues open studios just for the artists in the avenues and i, I just love the concept of this and she's so right about about art galleries and stuff is you never see the funk you never see the cool, the different. You, yeah. I mean, you do sometimes. Or it's like but, artsy. It's like a spray painted yeah. artsy can for fifty thousand dollars. Or like. And where are the blooming artists? Where are they coming from? Where yeah. are you generating this new, this new generation and stuff? So I just think it's cool and kind of romantic. You're walking in the avenues. It's kind of the fun kind of thing. This and I kind of want to take Zoe because I like the idea of that. This is a way you get to introduce your kids to all kinds of different art without yeah. taking them to a gallery and spending, you know, a boatload of money to get in. I thought it was neat. Speaking of Zoe uh, and you, uh, uh, your your favorite food type is falls in the category of sugar. Um, this is why Halloween is our holiday. You get oh to dress God. up, you get to decorate the house, you get a boatload of candy, and you don't have to give presents to anybody. It's a good thing. <laughs> All right, so what do you have? Um, well, it was funny. They were talking about the favorite candy state by state. And I thought it would be obvious. It would always be Snickers, right? What kind of what animals are you? What do you mean Snickers? You? Why do you go there so soon? Because only an animal would not pick Snickers. It's Reese's. As the, no. It's Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> You're pathetic. Those are the ones that your kid's bucket always has, and they're poisoned, so you must take them. Ironically, Utah in Utah, number one is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Is it really? You are absolutely correct. Uh, like, for instance, in Texas, yeah. it is also Reese's. Uh, for some reason, California is Milky Ways. What's wrong with you people? Um, yeah. Pennsylvania is Milk Duds. Uh, just, oh, those are good for pulling out fillings. Okay, now Texas, I respect you. You're back to Snickers. You understand the important thing here. Um, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups also in Washington, D.C. Colorado are Jolly Ranchers. Were you abused as a child? What were you never given chocolate? See, Jolly the, Ranchers? See the problem with Aaron with Jolly Ranchers is 
it takes so long to eat one that you can't be shoving more candy in your face. Yeah, and I can feel the cavity forming as the sugar lingers gently across my enamel. All right, who got Necco wafers? <laughs> that's what, That's all I want to know. You poor city. Oh, you. you you're just terrible. Tennessee. No, you're just. You're just <laughs> Tennessee, actually. Just, it's just sad. It's just sad. Well, you guys, hey, uh, check out check out the art deal. Um, oh, by the way, art off the grill. Because because we're really excited about it. It's going to be gorgeous. Yeah. Art off the grid. And once again, you can find more information. I'll have a link in the post today. All right. Very good. You guys have a great weekend. And we'll see you back here Monday on the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. Well, I'll be wearing sweaters. Sweaters and cold weather. Ooh, I'm not sure I'm ready. I need a scarf. <laughs> Bye.